Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com. I've got Islanders' second chronograph for you. Our first chronograph was the uh, Beth Page, the Amerigraph. And now I've got another one. Uh, this is our first Mecha Quartz movement. Uh, it's going to run on a Seiko VK64. It's a chrono, uh, and it's based, it's the, basically the DPA watches, if you recall those, ISL like 136, 137. Uh, it's those dials, but now done in chrono fashion. Uh, those dials, if you recall, were um, designed by Marvin Menke of Hemel Watches, who I have a good relationship with, and then he went ahead and designed some chronos. And I really, truly feel, and Ryan hit it on the head when he said this to me, these watches probably should have been chronographs first, automatic three-handed watches second, because they really work in the chronograph format. Uh, just really quick, what is a Mecha Quartz? Um, I'm pretty sure I've done a watch and learn on this. A Mecha Quartz is a combination of a mechanical and quartz movement, more or less. Not like a spring drive. Basically, you've got a quartz heartbeat. Uh, runs on, it's got quartz accuracy, it's got a quartz oscillator, you know, tuning fork, all that stuff. Uh, and then the chronograph portion is a mechanical module that runs on top. So if you think of things like um, on a chronograph, you can usually adjust the hand mechanically. Uh, if it gets bumped out of position um, with the, uh, through a setting, uh, a setting procedure. Uh, with a mecha quartz, there actually is no way to do that because the hand is locked in mechanically. The hand will not jump. It will not lose position. So kind of interesting. So they are 60 minute chronos and we're gonna check them out for my own wrist check. Well, I am wearing an original, a Seiko Orange Monster. Uh, well, not really original. This is a Gen 2, not a Gen 1. It's got the shark teeth on and SRP309 uh, was the model number. This watch, uh, I'm going to say, is somewhere around nine years old at this point. And on my other wrist is an Islander field watch. It is the Mitchell in blue. Uh, it will come back uh, along with a whole slew of day T Mitchells that will come out again. I'll go through uh, various re-releases, maybe introduce some new colors. I don't know. You'll see. Uh, but this video is about Mecha Quartz, the DPA Chrono. Check it out. So in case you're not aware of the original DPA watch, um, this was it. It's an automatic day and a date. Really cool looking dial layout. Um, came, or oh, still comes, we still have it. Originally came in three colors and we added two more. Uh, so really nice series. Runs on a, a Seiko NH36 movement. It's an all around good watch. But then, you know, Marvin and I were talking and said, you know, these watches would really make great chronographs. And as I said in the intro, when Ryan saw these, he's like, man, these should have been chronographs originally. And I fully 100% agree with him. So here are the DPA chronos, ISL um, 219, 220, 221, right now just in three colors. Um, if successful, we'll graduate to some of the other more popular color schemes. I will not talk about the color schemes themselves. If you've seen some of my past videos, you will know why I will not discuss what they emulate. Okay, so they're all going to run on a VK64 movement, which is a SII Hattori, basically Seiko Instruments movement, and Mecha Quartz, as I said. Uh, quartz Heart, mechanical module over it to run the chrono. So just, I basically tried to retain the same exact case as this guy, and for very good reason, because I wanted to be able to still use my BRAC 11 bracelet that I developed for the auto. And yes, you can. So we'll do a little bracelet fun later, because we deliver them all on these um, rally style rubber, uh, rubber, leather straps, 40 millimeters in diameter. We are 12 and a half thick to the dome of, uh, of a slightly domed sapphire crystal, AR on the underside, of course. 47 millimeters on the lug tip to lug tip. Uh, let's see, beautiful polishing on the case, polished sides, brushed top. We now have, and we've traded in the see-through case back for an etching that is, oh, sorry if I can get it with some, like right into the lens. Is that upside down? Oh my goodness. In case you don't know, I'm looking at a little screen off, to, uh, a larger screen off to the right. But there you go, DPA Chrono. Uh, you get a 
drag strip Christmas tree. It's got VK64, the battery type, so you know if you have it before you go to change the battery when you open it. Sapphire, 100 meters of water resistance, because like the original series, I kept a screw down crown. Not screw down pushers, but a screw down crown. 20 millimeter on the lug. They all come on a beautiful brown leather strap. Very, um, very supple. I won't say flimsy, but there is a little padding in them. Um, beautiful underside. Da, da, da. Sign buckle. 100 meters of water resistance. Weighs 75 grams on the strap. Any of them are yours for 229. So let's come up on it. So you see the beautiful use of colors. Silver hands. We'll check out the loom towards the end. Uh, it is a screw down crown, so you'll unscrew it. Comes out. Now, the VK64, if you're sharp with your movements, does have a date wheel. So there is a ghost, there actually is ghost clicking on this too. I will be honest with you. There is a date wheel underneath, but you can't see it. But two clicks out will change the time. That's all you really need. I did not want to use a date um, because, I, honestly, I don't know where to put it. I don't want to put the date at the 6 because then it eats away the beautiful 30. I wasn't going to put it at the 3 because then it eats away the subdial. It wouldn't look right over here. I, I, just everything was wrong. So I said, just cover it up. Let's not even use it. Um, I didn't want to use the other variants of the Mecca Quartz. I just don't like how they worked. I like this. Just This just works. It just looks sport. Uh, it looks awesome. Okay. Logo crown, of course. Push it in. You'll notice that the VK64 has no running seconds. So there is zero indication that the watch is running unless you have it sitting there for a while and you see the minute hand move. To activate the chronograph, you will depress the top pusher. And the chronograph hand, the center seconds hand, will start revolving. At the left is a 60 minute counter. Uh, so it's a 60 minute chronograph. After 60 minutes, it just keeps going around and around and around. There is no way for you to know that in one hour pass unless you take note of the time. Uh, because it is mechanical, it's a mechanical module, not really because, but one of the byproducts of it is that it is not a click over like you'd see in a full mechanic chronograph. Uh, it is a very slow moving um, hand, so after 30 seconds it's kind of halfway between 0 and 1, and then as it gets closer to 1, it basically hits the 1, so it's not going to snap over at 1. It's probably, yeah, it's already kind of moving. You can kind of see it. At the right is a 24-hour subdial. Yes, I know this serves absolutely zero purpose. The only thing it really does, it's a glorified AM, PM indicator. I was not going to put a sun and moon on it. It didn't work. Uh, so I really had Marvin dress it up. Nice colors, and it looks good. Um, I, I, I do enjoy things to have function. There's not much function here. Unless you're in a casino, you kind of know if it's AM, PM. But nevertheless, it still looks cool. So to uh, stop it, you press the button again. You can start it again. I did start it, right? It's going over the other hand. Oh, I didn't. There it goes. Okay, stop. Start. So now, I don't, whoops. <laughs> so I don't know if you can hear it. I'm going to come in. Uh, you probably can, actually. It, since it's a mecha, a mecha quartz, you have to press it pretty hard to get that. That's why I wasn't going before. And you'll feel a, feel a click. You'll hear a click, but you'll definitely feel it in your thumb. And then when you start it again, it goes so. And I'll stop it. And then when you reset, you hit this bottom button, and it kind of flies back to zero really fast. Everything's on a spring because it is mechanical. So this is one of those versions um, on a nice uh, kind of a tan tannish brown leather strap. We're going to be fast from this point on. We did a white dial with blue and red accents. Check out the applied indices. Uh, you'll, everything uses BGW-9 as the loom. You'll check that out. This guy's got blue hands. The one before just had silver hands. Got the blue and the red accents. There is a 24-hour clock running almost like a gauge around the inside circumference of the dial, intersecting the two subdials. Again, just a beautiful use of color. Um, this pop of orange here, it simply, it simply just works. There's, no, no, there's orange nowhere else on the dial. But over there, I don't know, even though it's not balanced, it just works perfectly. This hand's red, this one's orange. It just looks great. Again, use, I guess it's color theory. I don't really understand it, uh, but Marvin does, and he gets it. Um, you will also see that we have spelled out Mecca Quartz at the top in kind of our own lingo. Um, number one, we wanted to try to keep character count close to being the same on either side of the logo. But Mecca for mechanical. A lot of times when Mecca is spelled out, it's M-E-C-A. We chose to go with M-E-C-H-A because for mechanical. Uh, I don't know, just worked. Mecha, quartz, beautiful.
beautiful. Comes in a black strap. Get the same etching on the back of each one. And then the last one is this nice uh, hunter green, yellow, and white accents on a dark brown strap. Let's try to get the lens, the lens reflection out of there. Beautiful silvered markers. Like I said, when, um, after we do, um, I guess, a wrist or whatever, I don't know, I'm going to throw the bracelet on uh, so you can check it out. But I, I think the bracelet just mm, elevates it to uh, a great degree. Um, let's, uh, you know what I do? I'll try it on now. I'll do a loom, and then I'll throw it on the bracelet, and we'll check it out. So a 40 millimeter case fits my six and a half inch wrist perfectly, 47 on the lug tip to lug tip. There I am on the strap. I've got two more, three more, uh, a few, uh, no, a bunch more holes to go if I want to go tighter. Fits me very well. Let's see the loom. There you go. The BGW-9 looks great. So that 30 and 60 markers, uh, the 30 and 60 markers are done in blue. And then each of those indices has a little ramp in front of loom. Looks great. And the hands as well. There, no, there is no loom on the chrono hands. Kind of by design. If there was, it would pretty much be too weak to even see. So kind of why put it in there if it's not even going to work. So here it is on the uh, BRAC BRAC dash <laughs> dash 11 bracelet. It really changes it. Uh, on a bracelet, man, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So the bracelet, 59 bucks. It is an option. When you um, put the item in the cart, you can add this as an option, um, and it will come separately from uh, the watch and strap. It is solid link, solid end link. It is sized with screws. It has three positions of micro-adjust on a milled scissor clasp, our standard fair clasp. But that looks, man, that looks awesome. Really nice on the bracelet. Everything just kind of pops together. Um, I think that's, I think that's gonna do it. This has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing our first Mecha Quartz Chrono, the DPA Chrono with the VK64 movement. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. Questions, comments, concerns, queries, anything else? Put it down below, and I'll be sure to address it as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.